Hey everybody, Matt here with Take Roads Let's Travel. And today on the Avalanche, we are gonna be changing out the oil cooler gasket. This is a pretty common place that these trucks can leak. And really, this is actually good for any of the Gen 3 LS motors. So you're talking the 4.8, the 5.3, the 6 liter, the 6.2. Uh, this is gonna be the same process. And even if you don't have an oil cooler, it's still the same process because you still have a backing plate where the oil cooler block would go into the motor. And so it's the same process regardless. But the key difference is that the backing plate uses one style gasket, whereas the cooler actually uses a different style. But we'll get to that. So we're gonna crawl underneath, show you exactly what you need to do. We'll get this started. This is a pretty straightforward job, but there are a few things you're gonna need. First, go ahead and get the front of your vehicle lifted up. You can see I'm using ramps and I've got a chalk on the passenger rear wheel. Can't see it, but I promise you it's there. Safety first. Uh, or you can do jack and jack stands, but this just gives you a lot more space to work. Pretty good. Uh, you're gonna wanna have a quart of oil and also a funnel. Um, well, you don't have to have the funnel, but at least have a quart of oil because uh, there, you're probably gonna lose some oil from uh, taking the backing plate off or slash the oil cooler block off of the motor, you're probably gonna lose some oil, so you'll wanna be able to top it off. Drain pan to catch your oil, and a 10 millimeter wrench, uh, or 10 millimeter socket and ratchet, whichever one you uh, prefer. So uh, if you have a four wheel drive model like I've got, this is a little bit of a tighter squeeze. Two wheel drive, you've got a lot of space to work with, but uh, that's it, so time to get underneath. All right, we're underneath, and you can see just by looking right here and over here that I do have an oil leak. A little drip spot right up there and uh, I'm pretty sure that my leak is coming from this oil cooler block slash backing plate which is right here uh, now if you have an actual oil cooler I don't I just have the backing plate but if you have an actual oil cooler like on the z71 models or even on the heavy duties uh, that have the gas motors like any of the vans or any of the trucks that have the 6.0 in them uh, for the heavy duties. You're gonna have two metal lines coming off the top of a block up here that go towards the front of the motor. And it's the same process though. It, like I said, it just uses a different gasket. But uh, I am trying to figure out where my leak's coming from. I know it's not my valve covers because I've already replaced those and the gaskets. I know it's not my uh, oil pressure sensor because I've already changed out that and the O-ring and everything. And so now I'm down to either this or the rear main seal. And I'm really hoping it's not the rear main seal, but we'll see. Um, I'm hoping it's not. I, I really don't want to have to drop the front diff and everything. So like I said, if you're a two wheel drive, then you actually have a lot more space because you don't have this big front drive shaft sitting in your way. And this is just nice and open for you. Um, but uh, if you're four wheel drive, like I've got, you've got this drive shaft, but not a big deal. You can see, you can still access everything. So. It's not bad. So all we're gonna need to do is take these two bolts out and we're probably gonna get some oil coming uh, out of there, especially if you ran the truck to get it up on the ramps right before doing this, you're definitely get, gonna get some oil, but you're probably gonna get some oil coming out of there regardless. So that's why we have the pan. That's why we have the extra oil. So let's do this. So I'm gonna try and make it so that you guys can see everything that's going on as I fumble around here. Alright. So, all we're gonna do is take our 10 millimeter, get it up on there. Now these are not in here tight. Uh, these are actually only supposed to be torqued to 87 foot, or 87 inch pounds when you reinstall it, which, like I said, is not tight at all. So, I'm just working on this rear bolt, getting it out. Like I said, having a drive shaft really makes it a little tougher to let you guys see everything that's going on, but let me see here. Get this other one. Where'd you go? Ugh. I'm trying not to block the camera for you guys. There we go. There we go. So, like I said, uh, these bolts get tightened to, oh, there we go, and there's my oil drip. 
Told you you'd lose some oil. And like I said, I actually parked my truck up on the ramps last night. So this tells you, this has been sitting all night and I'm dripping oil out. So this does tell you that you're going to lose oil when you do this. So just be aware of that and all that good stuff. So let's get this drained out and there we go. Kind of the bummer for me is I actually just changed my oil. So this is brand new oil that I'm dumping right out. But that's kind of the life of having a Gen 3 LS is you find out there are oil leaks in different places and you fix it and you redo stuff and yay. But uh, like I said, so these bolts, uh, when you put them back in, they are to be tightened to 87 inch pounds which means you definitely want to have a uh, a torque wrench that's rated for inch pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench that's rated for inch pounds, uh, basically just take 87 and divide it by 12. And you end up at um, right around seven and a half, a little north of seven and a half foot pounds. Uh, I honestly don't know of a torque wrench that's will go that low so if you don't have an inch pound torque wrench uh i think you can rent them um but from like a part store or you can take the method that a lot of guys do and just be like oh we'll just snug it up but you do want to be very careful you don't want to you don't want to go too tight on these bolts uh, and obviously you don't want to be too loose either so no uh, We'll get this finished drained and we'll get this cover off and come back. All right, so you guys can see I have that off and like I said, there's there's two different gasket styles that you're gonna have. If you have the backing plate like I do, your gasket's gonna look just like this. Just has a big center section in there because since you don't have a cooler, you're not having to worry about um, the fluid um, only going in one port and out the other port. You don't have to have a seal between the two ports that are on the block up there. I don't know if I can really show that to you guys or not, but let me swap the camera around and hopefully be able to show this to you guys. So there we go. So this is what that port looks like. Uh, you can see you've got the holes for your bolts on either side, and then you got the two holes in the middle. Now, if you had an oil cooler, uh, you would have a block that attaches there and you would have a line that goes, that feeds fluid into the motor through one of those ports and out through the other. With the backing plate, you don't have that. It just has a small opening in the back, in the, uh, a valley in the plate where that oil can circulate in and out. Um, but you would have, if, if you had the oil cooler, your gasket would have two circles in that middle area with the rubber gasket material to block oil from being able to transfer in and out of those holes. Uh, but like I said, since I don't have a cooler and everything, my gasket simply has the opening in there. So just make sure you actually get the right gasket for what you have. Uh, you can see here on the backing plate, you can see that little valley in there where it allows the oil to circulate out of one hole and come back into the motor through the other. So uh, we're gonna let this drip just a little bit more and we'll take and uh, get it cleaned up and get the new gasket on there and get this job done. All right, so we're just about ready to get this put back together. Uh, before we do though, I need to get my new gasket out of my packaging. 
This is a Felpro part number 72435. And like I said, it's got that nice big opening right there in the middle of it because I don't have an actual cooler. I just have the backing plate. Um, again, if yours has a cooler, yours will have two circles with some gasket material between them. So again, make sure you get the correct gasket for what you're doing and for what you've got. Now, the joy of this gasket setup is it goes on real easily. All you do is just put it on. Just like that. And then, where'd my bolts go? In there. And then, just put your bolts through. And then you can put this up in place. But first, I want to make sure I get any last little bit of oil off that surface. I want that to be nice and clean so that uh, I'm not, I don't have any fluid schmooping out on me. It's the last thing I need. Nope. Get my rag up in there. Get that all cleaned up. Nice big diesel truck driving by my driveway while I'm trying to film. And, uh oh. Ah! Oh. Gasket came off of one of my bolts. All right, I'm gonna have to move this oil pan. I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna have to move the camera a little bit too. I actually may help you guys see it a little bit better. I don't know. The light's not all that great up there. All right, having a front drive shaft in the way makes this a little tougher to film, but I don't wanna give up my four wheel drive trucks and I'm not gonna remove a drive shaft just for this. Get these bolts started. There we go. So I'm blocking your view on a lot of this, guys. Sorry about that. But gotta get a job done. And if you're at all mechanically inclined, I'm sure you can piece together what I'm doing here from what you can see. And if not, leave a comment. Let me know how terrible of a job I did and, you know, because I'm just a YouTube mechanic and, you know, I haven't been working on cars for very long, you know, none of that. So, you know, I'm just messing with you guys. All right, so we're just gonna snug that on both of these bolts. There we go. Now, pull out a little torque wrench. Like I said, a seven inch pounds, little click. little click and there we go all right so that is now changed out make sure everything is good there it appears to be and now all i'm gonna do is go to the top of the motor uh start the start the truck up get it off the ramps um check my oil level See how that looks and top it off if I need to. And that's it, it's super easy. So that is how you change out the gasket on these oil cooler slash backing plate blocks for these Gen 3, uh, Gen 3 LS motors. 
real simple, real easy. Like I said, if you don't have a drive shaft in the way, it's even easier, but still easy even with the drive shaft. So hope this helps and I will see y'all on the roads less traveled.